application. Moving further, we'll also understand the different methods under this robot class. And also, we'll see how to implement this robot class in Selenium. And finally, we'll wrap up this session by taking a look at the limitations of this robot class. Time plays a major role while testing, and we need to make sure that we complete the desired task within the specific time. A robot class is used to generate native system input events for the purpose. When you want to test an application using Selenium, you need a few functions that might save up the time during execution. One such method that helps in controlling certain functions of the system is by using a robot class. So hi everyone, this is Vaishnavi from Edureka and in this session we'll understand the importance of a robot class while testing an application. So let's begin this session by taking a look at the agenda. So we'll first start by understanding what is a robot class and also take a look at the importance of this class while testing an application. Moving further, we'll also understand the different methods under this robot class. And also, we'll see how to implement this robot class in Selenium. And finally, we'll wrap up this session by taking a look at the limitations of this robot class. Time plays a major role while testing and we need to make sure that we complete the desired task within the specific time. A robot class is used to generate native system input events for the purpose of test automation, self-running demos and other applications where the control of mouse and keyboard is needed. The primary purpose of this robot class is to facilitate the automation testing for the Java platform implementations. In simple terms, I can say that this class provides control over the mouse and the keyboard devices. This robot class can handle the pop-ups during the execution. This class is very easy to use with the automation process. Now you might ask why do we need this robot class when we can perform actions on the keyboard and as well as hover the mouse over the location on the web page. Right to answer this I would say a robot class is used to simulate and handle the mouse and keyboard functions. We don't have to click any button while automating a web page. It can handle all the pop ups as well as the notification section of the web page. It also helps you when you want to upload a file onto an application. This can be done using this robot class. Hope you guys got a clear idea on why we use this robot class in Selenium. So this is about what is a robot class and why we use this robot class in Selenium. Now let's move on to our next topic that is what are the different methods that are used while working on this robot class. So there are basically five different methods. As I mentioned earlier, it handles all the keyboard and mouse functions. So the first method would be the key press. So this is used to press any key on the keyboard. For example, if you have this particular command, it will press the up key in the keyboard. Next up, we have the key release method. This is used to release the press key of the keyboard. For example, if you have this particular command, it will release the pressed caps lock key in the keyboard. So this is about the methods that are used to control the keyboard functions. Now let's take a look at the methods that are used to handle the mouse functions. In this we have the mouse press method which is used to press the left button of the mouse. For example, if you have this particular command, it helps in pressing the left button of the mouse. And then we have the mouse release method which is used to release the pressed button of the mouse. For example, if you have this particular command, it helps in releasing the pressed button of the mouse. Last up, we have the mouse move method which will move the mouse pointer to the X and the Y coordinates. Coordinates of the elements are passed in this mouse move method. So the command goes something like this. It says robot dot mouse move and specify the coordinates of the X axis and also the Y axis. OK, so these are the methods that actually control the mouse and the keyboard functions. To understand how to implement this robot class in Selenium, let's take a look at the implementation of this robot class. So to do that, we require the latest version of Java installed in our system and also an IDE where we can perform all the actions. So let's check if Java is installed in our system. Let's go to command prompt and type Java hyphen version. This is the version of Java installed in my system. So now we need an IDE where we can perform the actions. 
I'm going to consider working on the Eclipse ID because it is very convenient when you're working on a Java project. So I'll just quickly open this Eclipse ID. Launch the workspace. OK, so this is the Eclipse workspace guys. So first, so first I'm going to create a new project that is a new Java project. Go to new and go to Java project. You need to give this a name. So I'm going to name this project as a robot class. Click on finish. OK, you can see that there is a folder being created by the name robot class. I'm just going to click on the drop down. You can find the source field and the Java libraries. Now we need to add the Selenium jar files to this folder. So I'm just going to right click on this. Go to build path and configure the Selenium libraries. Add external jars. Selenium standalone server. OK. And we require the Selenium libraries. Open add external jars. Open all the Selenium libraries are added to this project. Click on apply and close. You can find another folder which holds the Selenium libraries. Now let's write our code in this source field. Go to new and go to class. So I'm going to name this as demo class where I'm going to include the main function and click on finish. So in this case, we'll try performing actions on our official website at Eureka.co. So to do that, I'm going to first set the browser driver. So in this case, we'll be performing actions on the Chrome driver. So I'm going to type system dot set property. And specify the driver that is web driver dot Chrome dot driver and also specify the path in which it is located. In my case, it's in the C drive. So I'm just going to copy this path and go back to my project. And paste the location here. One thing you need to know when you specify the path, it should always end with the extension Chrome driver dot exe. That is it specifies that it's an executable file. And after this, I'm going to instantiate the Chrome driver. OK, so to do that, I'm going to create an object of the web driver and call it driver and instantiate it with the new Chrome driver. OK, you can see that it throws an error. So just import the web driver packages to this project. OK, I think you guys understood how to set the browser driver. Now let's get the URL of the web page. So I'm going to consider the object of the web driver that is driver dot get. And paste the URL here. So it's HTTP colon. Eureka.co. So this is the URL of the web page guys. Now let's go to our web page at Eureka.co. So we're going to perform actions on this web page here. Now say you want to click this particular element on the web page. So I'm just going to inspect this. OK, you can see that the link text is present. So I'm just going to copy this link text. And go back to my project. So I'm going to consider the object of the web driver that is driver dot find element by the link text and specify the link text here. As it's a clickable element, I'm going to click this particular location. OK, so once this is done, I'm going to instantiate the robot class. So to do that, I'm going to call robot and create an object of the same and call it robot as well. And I'm going to instantiate it with the new robot. You can see that it throws an error here. So import the robot packages to the project. OK, throws declaration. It throws AWT exceptions. OK, so once you initialize this robot class, we need to perform certain actions on the keyboard as well as the mouse functions. So to do that first, I'm going to pause the execution for a few seconds. So I'm going to pause the execution for four seconds. It throws an error, so add throws declaration. OK, once you're done initializing the robot class, I'm going to perform some actions on the keyboard. So I'm going to consider the object of the robot class that is robot dot key press. I'm going to press this particular key. 
key event which specifies that a key stroke is initialized. Okay, so once you do this, I'm going to consider pressing the key down, which specifies that the key is pressed. Okay, so once you do this, I'm going to pause the execution for a few seconds so that you can see that the key is pressed. It's in milliseconds, so I'm going to consider it as four seconds. And then I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard. So to do that, I'm going to consider the object of the robot class. Key press. The key event and specify that you want to press the tab. OK, so do add the thread dot sleep command so that you can actually pause the execution for a few seconds and it will be useful when you're executing the program. Thread dot sleep. Pause the execution for four seconds here as well. Now, in order to make sure that you don't have errors while executing the program, I'm going to add the system dot print ln command. I'm going to print E here. OK, after this, I'm going to press another tab key. So consider the object of the robot class bot dot key press and specify the key event and also specify that you want to click the tab button. OK. And after this, I'm going to pause the execution for a few seconds. And I'm going to print a certain text so that you can know where the error exists when you're executing. I'm going to print B and again, I'm going to click the tab key. So consider the object of the robot class key press specify the key event and also perform actions on the tab. Again, I'm going to pause the execution for a few seconds. And I'm going to print. After you're done performing actions with the keyboard functions, now let's move on and automate the mouse functions. So I'm going to consider the object of the robot class that is robot dot mouse move where you have to specify the axis in which you want the mouse to move. So I'm going to take it as 30 and the Y axis will be 100. OK, so let's see how this comes up. And after this, I'm going to print system dot out dot print Ellen where I'm going to pass this particular text. And after this is done, I'm going to exit the driver execution. So driver dot quit. OK, it quits the driver execution. So I'm going to save this code and run it. Run as Java application. It first navigates to Edureka website, searches for the course link, then opens it. processes the keyboard functions and the mouse handle function. Okay, you can see that it is going here. That is the tap function and the mouse handling function. Okay, so this is how Selenium can control the mouse functions as well as the keyboard functions. Now let's take a look at the limitations of this robot class. The mouse or the keyboard event will work only on the current window. It is difficult to switch among different screens or windows. For example, if a code is executing any robot event by the code execution, but the code execution is moved to another window or a new window. In this case, the mouse or the keyboard event will still remain the same, but on the previous window. A method like this mouse move depends on the screen resolution. And if you're using the XY coordinates for your test, then the test will behave differently on the different screens. And if in case you're running your tests in a virtual machine, then the script failure is more. OK, so these are the certain limitations of this robot class. So guys, this is everything you need to know about robot class in Selenium. If you want to learn more about Selenium WebDriver, don't forget to take a look at the Edureka's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning.